Yes, like one point, and I only had one month to study. So. Wow, wow, that is yeah. awesome. Well done. You are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS students. In this episode, we're going to talk with Mariana. And Mariana's got a fantastic story about how she passed IELTS. Uh, she's from Brazil. So, Mariana, could you just introduce yourself, please? Hi, Ben. Uh, first, I would like to appreciate you giving me this opportunity today. And um, I, as you said, I'm from Brazil. I'm 26 years old. And uh, I have finally passed IELTS, uh, thankfully, to you and the uh, amazing course. <laughs> it was very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And so why... Um, I know we just mentioned this previously, but um, for the listeners, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Um, I decided to take the IELTS because I'm uh, trying to immigrate to Canada and uh, I needed um, at least a, um, three, um, a set sevens in all of the categories, right? Mm -hmm. All of the, the parts. And... Um, that's why I'm trying to immigrate to Canada and for the immigration for immigration purposes, I need to show a CBL nine uh, on the program mm -hmm. and uh, that requires uh, good grades on IELTS. Right, right. I see. And um, can I ask you what your profession is? Um, I, I have a major in marketing and communications mm -hmm. and I used to work uh, at a at a, at a shoe company back in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, taking care taking care of all the marketing events mm -hmm. of the brand. Interesting, yeah. interesting. And uh, are you working now in Canada in the same profession? No, currently I'm not working. Uh, I'm still waiting for for my immigration for, for, um, process to finish mm -hmm. uh, because that will give me the the work permit right? I, right I will be allowed to work so for now i'm just uh, enjoying this beautiful country mm -hmm. while i wait excellent okay yeah. um so can you tell me um how many times did you take the exam was it just first time or have you taken it a few times so uh i have taken the ielts five times wow right uh the first time it was three years ago so actually doesn't count but uh -huh. it was my first trial so I, I had already some contact with it mm -hmm. and since I decided to immigrate to Canada I took four times so that was six months ago so four times in a six month months period mm -hmm. uh, one in December one in February one in April and now the successful one in June right right yeah. and this is um, in Canada yeah, not in Brazil. Uh, only the first one was in Brazil mm -hmm. uh, in December. The other ones were all here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, the final one was computer-based because that's a new thing, uh, mm. right? Mm. I see. Kind of, they're kind of implementing uh, the computer-based still. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I had tried three times already and hadn't been successful, when I heard about the computer-based, I thought it could be interesting because you know nowadays we type much much faster than we write yeah right? yeah totally so, and actually that gave me lots of extra time i i had 15 minutes to recheck all my work wow. comparing when in comparison to the others mm. i used to have three or four minutes wow wow yeah. that's and that major that made a huge huge difference for me so I would really recommend for everyone that uh, feels that have like that they have like a good compute like good computer skills. Mm. I would definitely recommend it. Mm. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice. Yeah. I was thinking if I was taking the test, I would do exactly the same. It would have yeah. to be computer based because nowadays yeah. when we're writing pen and paper, most mm -hmm. people 
the most they're going to write is like, I don't know, 50, 50 words, you know, unless you're yeah. in university. But even then, if you're in university, you're going to be typing up your essays and mm -hmm. sending them. So you're never going to be writing more than 50 words. So when it comes to IELTS and you've got to write, I don't know, 250, 300 words for your test two and then a, another mm -hmm. 200 or whatever for academic task one, then it's it's a challenge. Just take, it just takes too much time. And yeah. uh, I also, another thing that is important to consider is that when you're writing instead of typing, you have to think of the sentence before you write. Because if you write something wrong, you have to erase everything and start again. Mm. Mm. And you just waste too much time, you know? Mm. And I got another good point. The computer-based counts the words for you. Yeah, yes, yeah. I saw that Which on the... Amazing. Yeah, I saw that on the screenshot. And yeah, I, I totally agree. Just going back to what you said before about the editing, that you can just like dump all your thoughts and then go back and edit um mm -hmm. i don't think mm -hmm. you can can you copy paste um like copy yes. wow that's a game yeah. changer so, isn't it yeah yes it's it's huge because you can just type whatever you it, it comes to your mind if you mm -hmm. i don't know if you're not if you're not feeling so prepared you can just type whatever you want mm -hmm. and then you can just edit wow. the way you want it yeah, that's yeah. a game changer, isn't it? And yes, can you take notes with pen and paper on the side at the same time? Um, yes, they do give you a uh, pen and paper. So what I did was on the, the paper, I wrote my um, my main ideas for the paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I put like P1, this and that, P2, this and that. Mm -hmm. And then I started typing, but it took me like two minutes tops to do that wow wow and also another advantage is like you will be writing the essay exactly the same way as you were writing it when you were preparing for with the online course that you mm -hmm. did correct yes because you were already like i was already practicing typing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. while i was doing the course i was typing yeah i, I didn't write any of the essays mm -hmm. uh, by hand so right. so that's very good like i felt much more confident i felt much more uh you know like at ease i mm -hmm. didn't feel that much pressure as i did on the on the three other time mm -hmm. yeah totally totally understand that so how were you preparing in the previous exams um well for the first two in december and february i I didn't really thought it through and uh, I thought that uh, I could just do it by myself mm -hmm. online, like on YouTube or like um, just revising some like friends materials and stuff mm -hmm. because I thought like okay going from 6.5 to 7 should be super easy <laughs> <laughs> but no it was the hardest thing I have ever done and um so the first two times I didn't, I just thought that preparing by myself should be fine. Yeah. Should be fine. Uh -huh. And uh, for the third time, I got like an uh, online uh, English speaking tutor, mm -hmm. which was good. Yeah. But um, of course, she she showed me a couple things, mm -hmm. but not enough uh, for the IELTS because the thing, uh, it's just... You don't have to know how to speak English, basically. <laughs> you just have to know how to do the exam. It's like so insane. Because mm -hmm. um, it's important to know like the correct techniques and the correct uh, structures of the sentences and yeah. uh, how to build like um, like um, straightforward paragraphs. Yes, yes. Right? Like that are very, they're, they're actually simple, right? Mm -hmm. exactly you have mentioned that in many of your of your podcasts that i've heard and mm -hmm. um it, it's very simple so uh this tutor was good but she didn't uh show me the correct way i would say right yeah i've heard this yeah. a lot and then yeah sorry no i was just going to say like I, I heard this a lot and that a student will want to get ready for the exam so they'll find a tutor online Mm -hmm. And the tutor will, as you said, will speak English perfectly, probably. Um, but that's not the same as having the exam knowledge. And it's not yeah. the same as 
the ability to prepare students mm. for an exam. It's uh, yes. it, it of course it's helpful, but it's you, you you need more than helpful. You need a specific mm -hmm. step by yes. step uh, plan. Writing essays and also getting the feedback as well. Yes, the feedback is amazing. And actually, uh, I remember when I first I heard the first feedback of mm -hmm. my essay with you guys. Mm -hmm. That so then for the for the, the first time I decided that I need some guarantee. So so that's why I went to you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember he hearing my first feedback with my boyfriend. And he was like, that's amazing. That's the most uh, effective and greatest, like, detailed uh, feedback that I have ever heard. Wow. <laughs> he was like, that's so specific. Like, because I, I don't remember which one of the correct, which one of them were correcting me the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but she was saying, like, Mariana, uh, it's not this that's not what you should put here like mm -hmm. you should work on that this in that way like mm. actually guiding me and showing me the way so mm. it's very good to have someone to not just saying like it's right or wrong mm. but saying how to correct it and how to deal with that for different subjects or in different moments you mm -hmm. know so that, that was very good yeah excellent excellent i'm glad you i'm glad you like that but yeah we get it quite a lot that the students are quite surprised and it's sort of like the lights have been switched on when they get yes. yeah when they get their essay back and also the essay correctors that we have they're ex ielts examiners as well so they know exactly yes, that's very great yeah yeah they know exactly how to get the student to the next to the next level Mm -hmm. So, you were um, you were sending in your essays and you, you were getting feedback. But before this, you were with an online tutor. And what about for the other sections? How were you preparing for the for the speaking, for example, or for the reading, for the listening? Um, so reading and listening, I uh, always practiced online. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there, there are a bunch of uh, of good. Um, Try, uh, websites that you can find like the whole um, the whole test to try mm -hmm. and thankfully I wasn't feeling so uh, worried about it because the previous times I I did very good like 8.5 or 8 so I wasn't feeling so stressed about it mm -hmm. and, but actually for this time I lost um i lowered my reading and speaking a little bit in oh. like uh, half a point because right. i think i was so focused on the writing that yeah. <laughs> i couldn't think of anything else <laughs> but yes i always prepared for those sections online and speaking um mm -hmm. i i used to practice with friends so that w w really worked with me but only because I already felt safe mm -hmm. is that a friend would send me a topic and I would practice the timing and uh, the uh, what I would say if I got that subject, that topic. I see. But I would recommend having also uh, feedback on the speaking, um, mostly on the speaking, then the reading and the listening, because it's good to have like a... a, a examiner or a tutor telling you the the right things i mm. only did that like by myself because i wasn't feeling worried about it and because i i think i i i have a good speaking you know yeah yeah i see but i i wouldn't recommend that for it for someone trying for the first time for example or mm -hmm. you know that if the, if you don't feel too like very safe go uh, to someone that can give you some feedback and let you like be more relaxed because it can be very stressful the speaking as well because you have to think about the topic like in one minute very fast and you have to be uh, the thing is uh, a good thing that I, I I see is that you have to be giving details all the time you mm. cannot just uh, say like oh I live in Vancouver Okay, so you have to extend that and uh, talk in more details and more specifically 
instead of just giving a direct answer. So it's good to have feedback. Absolutely, absolutely. Two points there. When um, you mentioned it and you said it perfectly, you cannot say, I live in Vancouver. You have to say, yeah, I live yeah. in um, Vancouver in the northern part. And nearby there's a, a train station that keeps me up in the evenings. But yes. there's a beautiful park just to the west of, uh, of our house. And I quite enjoy it. We've got a few friends there, etc., etc. And just that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the point you mentioned before about getting like topics and practicing with your friends. Um, so you, I imagine you prepared for a whole wide range of topics, so nothing could ca could catch you unprepared. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good to practice as. Uh, in the same way as with the writing, it's good mm -hmm. to practice as many kinds of topics mm -hmm. as you can because it can be the like the like anything. It could be anything. Like for mm -hmm. the the previous time, not this one. I got on the speaking talk about um, a building in your neighborhood that is being renovated. Mm, like for wow. two minutes <laughs> yeah hard <laughs> awesome like, you know. <laughs> wow and that's a tricky time, one this time was talk about a time that you woke up very early wow so why did you wake up very early uh, uh -huh. what did you do how did you feel like so, so you know like one thing has nothing to do with the other <laughs> yeah Wow. So it's good to practice as much as you can uh -huh. because, and I would say, especially for the writing, if you, if there is one topic that you don't know anything about, practice that one as much as you can. Like for mm -hmm. me, for example, I don't know nothing about uh, recycling, green energy, wow. this kind of stuff. Right. And I did one, one of my uh, essay uh, that were corrected with you guys were was about that mm. and it took me forever to gather all the information that I wanted to put on my essay so mm. the thing is practice the hard topics <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah totally agree with you there totally agree um, I remember one student telling us that she wrote out answers for the speaking for all these different cue cards that she could find. Mm -hmm. She just wrote mm -hmm. like a hundred word answers and like discovered her weak spots uh, just yeah. by doing this. Um, when you was practicing, when you were practicing your speaking, you um, did you write out your answers or were you just uh, doing like voice recordings and sending them back no, and forth? I used, I used to write it as well because mm -hmm. it's important for you to know how to write in a fast way like you know, on that one minute that you have mm, and mm. Uh, when i couldn't write like if i was like like if i was practicing on the bus i don't know mm. i would i would like put it on my cell phone you know like write it on my cell phone ah, i see yes event, like put it on the notes mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh and then rewriting sometimes at home just like to have that on like in my mind and um being actually prepared for the the situation that you go through during the exam right because mm. you're so nervous and you don't know what to expect and sometimes uh, what happens is that the the examiner uh, he he cuts you like when you're talking when you're talking <laughs> when you're speaking they cut you and that's fine but the first time you do it you're not actually expecting that so you get even more nervous uh -huh. so the more information you can gather and the more you can study and, and practice, mm -hmm. you're going to feel more safe, yeah, like safer. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to build your confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So the examiner cut you off when you were talking. Yes. That happened two times already. Wow. Okay. And, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the previous one and this one as well. Right. Uh, they cut me off. Uh -huh. But I heard that's fine. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, until some point mm -hmm. uh, of course you can't go like go like out of the topic right yeah yeah exactly but uh, if they cut you because you are like uh, giving more details and everything if you already answered all the questions like uh, of that cue card mm -hmm. that's fine yeah but you he cannot cut you if you like it's not good if he cuts you and you didn't answer like 
full uh, the question fully. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, totally agree there. Um, now, just going back to the climate change essay that we that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. you said something. Um, you said one, it's a weak spot for you that you're not very, very that. You, you don't know what, that much about it or you didn't know that much about it. And when you yeah. got the question, you researched about it before writing. Is that right? Yes, I did. Mm. And uh, instead of once one thing that I used to do it before was to look for the question that I got mm -hmm. on Google mm -hmm. and see uh, other essays right. that were written about it. Right. Instead of doing that, I started uh, searching um, articles about the topic. So, like, I don't know, uh, the question was about green energy and uh, or like uh, fuel, like regular fuel sources. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I instead of looking for the question, I I used to look like. Uh, what are the advantages of green energies in the modern world? Mm. I don't know, something like that, you know, like to actually try to learn mm. how, like what the world is seeing on that topic, you mm. know? Yeah, yeah, I see. Because that was, that was a very hard topic for me. So I tried to go kind of deep mm. on it. And also another topic that I, 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 I found out from a friend that took the exam a little bit uh, before me that she got a question about how immigration affects uh, children. Wow. Okay. And I felt like I never wrote anything about that. Mm. So I went down to Google and like other sources mm. to find out more. And especially like with the United States and everything that we know that is happening uh, mm -hmm. with immigration and stuff. Yeah, uh, and, and I looked for all the articles that were talking about the children suffering to adapt and great mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is really important because even I mean, you could be a native speaker and you could know the perfect exam strategy, but if you've got no idea about how to get ideas, yeah. uh, if you've got no mm -hmm. content in there, you're still mm -hmm. going to fail. And it's uh, yeah. it's a very important very often overlooked part of the exam is the ability to to generate ideas so mm -hmm. um i'm really interested in this because on the online course we as you know we've got that like you know you've got to generate ideas for about 30 for about 16 different essays um mm -hmm. as as part of the starter um That's when true. when you research them do you put your answers into a, a word document do you form opinions what happens there yes i did uh, especially mm. when I, when i was looking for these uh hard topics i would mm -hmm. say i used i i wrote them down like uh okay i could say that i could say this um mm. a good uh topic in favor like a good argument in favor could be that children uh, adapt easier like easily to new cultures or new languages mm -hmm. but uh, but a, a disadvantage would be that uh, I don't know uh, like prejudice against um, different cultures you know yeah. like yeah yeah things like that so I used to so when I was when I was searching and uh, researching for for these contents, mm -hmm. I would write them down uh, in case I had to write uh, an essay about it. And also another good thing about that is to get um, topic uh, related vocabulary, right? Exactly. Yes. That is something that you always talk about also. Mm -hmm. That gives you even more uh, safety when you're writing about something that you don't know if you know the the vocabulary well it's better to write like a, a like good sentences and strong uh in a, in a strong essay absolutely absolutely very good point that there that you mentioned mariana um i completely agree and yeah it just re i wanted to know about like how you did develop your your research and how you wrote it down and mm -hmm. as you just very, very sharply mentioned, you said 
Um, not only was I researching for opinion, uh, for ideas and information about the pro about the uh, topic, you develop that to the next stage of an opinion, as you just did. Mm. You know, it's mm -hmm. bad for it. It can be good for the children because, well, it's the children can adapt, so it's not too bad. It could be bad because the children might be exposed to prejudice, and then also the next level is extracting the vocabulary. So mm -hmm. when when you were extracting the vocabulary, you did you just highlight the useful terms and put them in a list? What did you do? Um. Since I was writing, trying to write, uh, trying to create, um, I'm sorry, I lost the word. I was trying to create arguments. Mm -hmm. I, I would write uh, words that I didn't know and uh, the translation in Portuguese, when right. I didn't know the exact translation, I would write it down on the side. So I mm. would write the, the possible argument. Uh, the the word and the translation in in Portuguese when I didn't know uh, exactly what it mean mm. uh, what it meant so so for me something that I don't know not everyone is the same but for me something that really works is to write it down uh, I have I have this crazy <laughs> um, uh, habit of writing everything down so I have, <laughs> if I have to remember something I'm gonna write it down I'm gonna put it in my calendar I'm gonna write it on the mirror I'm gonna do something <laughs> no post-its <laughs> so for me it's something that actually works mm -hmm. and uh, I guess it's a good study me method uh, when you write it down uh, yeah. your brain kind of uh, absorbs better mm -hmm. so so that really worked for me Absolutely. And yeah. it's something that I actually do on regular days. Like if I see a word that I don't know, I'm trying to read more books in English. Right. And sometimes um, I see like these di very different words. Uh -huh. And I, I and even if I don't need them, if I don't need that word for anything, I go to the translator and I try to find out what it means and how to use it. And I write it down. Yeah, absolutely. I was doing the same when I was in, in Spain. And uh, mm. any new word that I found, I would just write it down. And I remember yeah. the f when I first got to Spain, I would go out with some new friends and we would go out to the bars and I would be writing down new words. And then in the morning, I would pull out my list. And at the beginning of the list, it was neat and tidy and then useful, maybe like uh, professional words and then but the quality just got worse and worse and worse as we as we went down the list you know? and mm -hmm. it's like okay that was the progression yeah. that was the progression of the night but yeah it's useful to uh to, to write them down to to memorize mm -hmm. them and i also find That's... that it, if you can use them as well in the same day that definitely helps with the memorization yes. yeah that is even better mm -hmm. and just one other thing um and, um, I've got a Kindle and I'm still, I, when I'm reading in English, there's words that I don't understand. There's words because it's, you know, the vocabulary is so big in English. And mm -hmm. with the Kindle, it's really good because you just tap it and you get the meaning, you get the definition. And it oh, saves. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it saves those words as well. And I've got like a couple of hundred to get through. Um, but I need to review oh, them. But, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, then. So we've talked about your preparation. Now uh, let's briefly, let's quickly talk about what happened on your test day for the writing. Uh, okay. you, it was on IELTS on computer. Do you remember your question? Yes, it was. Um, I, I don't remember like grammatically exactly how it was written, but <laughs> it was um, older people is increasing. Right. Some say that this brings uh, advantages to the country. Mm -hmm. Others say that it can have like negative, like like it can have drawbacks. Mm -hmm. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Mm, I see. And I have never wrote anything about that. <laughs> this is my next question. I was going to say that had had you researched it beforehand? No. Ooh. Right. I have never written anything about it. Right. Thankfully, I knew the word elderly, mm. which was very helpful. Mm. <laughs> and um, I, I tried to, you know, 
think of common sense and uh, what I think about uh, uh, like uh, life expectancy getting higher and mm -hmm. people living like uh, elderly people uh, having healthier habits and mm -hmm. thinking about that yeah and uh, I, I I actually just followed the question and I started with the advantages uh, on the first paragraph mm -hmm. second paragraph uh, the what could be the drop possible drawbacks I talked about how like new regulations and uh, legislations would have to be put in place by the government to protect the safety of uh, elderly people at work mm -hmm. and um, I tried to follow that and I gave my opinion saying that it actually has many advantages mm -hmm. to these this uh, development I would say mm -hmm. and uh, I got it <laughs> Thankfully. I got it and I actually I actually give uh, many, like all, basically all the credit to you guys and the C2 template. That was amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Really very helpful. Uh -huh. uh, I, I passed 250 words easily, which yeah. was a hard thing for me on mm. the other, on the previous uh, tests. Mm -hmm. I had a, a very, like, it was very hard for me to go uh, over 250 words. Right. And I was always worried mm -hmm. uh, about accomplishing that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very, it was, even though it was a hard topic, uh, I think with the vocab that I had already and uh, like uh, just uh, common knowledge about uh, quality of life and mm -hmm. how people live nowadays yes that, yeah. that was very good yeah i think having this awareness of like international affairs and mm -hmm. just as you said like a common sense approach to it you know and just thinking through this yeah. logically and then yeah. sprinkling in the vocabulary mm -hmm. that's going to help you boost your score mm -hmm. like you just said like life expectancy and terms like this the examiners they love they love yeah. it so mm -hmm. Yeah, in, because we cannot just uh, create <laughs> and like invent like a uh, crazy arguments, right? It exactly. Has to, yeah, it has to make sense. Uh huh. And two things you mentioned, you thought about your granddad. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't write in the essay. My granddad will be 70 next year, etc, etc. No, no, I, I, I don't know why. I don't have it's not so easy for me to give um, examples from my life so i have seen many essays uh where people say, like, of course i said in my opinion blah 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 yes but of course I, I i i've seen in other essays people saying like for example my boyfriend and i live yeah in Vancouver. i don't know like something like that mm -hmm. but for me it's not something that i can really apply on my essays mm -hmm. so for me it's easier I, I remember you talking about one of your podcasts that it sometimes is easier to go uh, opposite to what you believe. Mm. Sometimes it's easier to write on like about something that is opposite to what you actually support or believe. Yes. Uh, just to be easier to write. Exactly. And for me, that's something that it, that works. So sometimes, um, if the topic. Uh, talks about uh, gender equality mm -hmm. even though I support gender equality it may be easier for me to write the opposite right know? yes yes yeah. and at yeah. the end of the day we're looking for points in our ability to communicate not mm -hmm. in, not for points in our beliefs and we don't need to communicate our yes. beliefs we just need to communicate a powerful argument so yeah yeah <laughs> Um, okay, I was just asking about the granddad because um, what I see a lot is essays like you've been seeing online. It's like, oh, my, my, my girlfriend and I, we live in blah, 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 or my granddad is turning 70. And I always recommend transforming these examples, uh, personal examples, into more academic examples. So if it was, yeah. Some, yeah, if it was something like, I don't know, my granddad is approaching 70 and will soon need assistance, we could say something like, um, most adults, um, most uh, elderly or most senior people approaching 70 will most likely need 
assistance as they progress through the years, etc., etc. Exactly. Then, it's yeah. even easier to make it like more coherent and more like mm. like easier to to read. Right? Yes, absolutely. Instead of putting a personal example, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Totally agree. And then the other point that you mentioned earlier in our conversation that you were sat there in the exam room and you had a pen and paper um, on nearby and you just put your ideas for p1 and p2 and then started writing is that right mm -hmm. yes exactly so since i took the the test computer based mm -hmm. uh, i wrote it down everything on I, i typed it but they give you a pen and paper if you want to uh, write anything in there they're mm -hmm. not going to consider that but you can write anything you want mm -hmm. so on the paper i just put Uh, my thoughts for the P1, my thoughts for the P2, with yes. the, the examples that I was that I was going to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, like it took me two minutes mm -hmm. uh, with the techniques that I learned uh, from the course. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, I started typing. And by the end, I had uh, 15 minutes to recheck everything. Wow, that's beautiful! Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. 15 and minutes all, is a yeah, luxury. I, yeah, and I don't know. Uh, how everyone feels but um i always start with the task two yes you yes. know it's longer uh -huh. so i started with test two i remember that when i finished test two i still had 30 minutes um it, it, the clock is counting on the computer as well uh -huh. i still had 30 minutes Uh, then I did task one in 15 minutes. Right. Um, and then um, I still had the 15 minutes to correct, which was great because I actually, like when you're typing, uh, you can have like, you can type too fast and change one letter. Mm -hmm. And I did that. Right. Uh, I, I wrote world uh, with the L in the wrong way. <laughs> so that also gave me time to recheck and see if, uh, if it was coherent. Uh, one thing for me that I found out with your course is that I wasn't being, on my first essays, I wasn't uh, accomplishing the task achievement mm. uh, requirement. Mm. So I had the time to recheck and see if I was actually answering the question the correct way and if I wasn't going off topic. Mm, absolutely yeah. yeah yeah this is a very important um factor as well like to double triple yeah. check that we are on topic yeah. okay. okay well that is fantastic so in the end what were your scores mariana well in the end uh after three six point fives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i jumped to seven point five wow the writing Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. Well done, yes. Mariana. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm very happy. Finally, I, like, I'm feeling actually relieved. Yes. And um, it was, I'm very grateful that I, I found you guys, even though I wished I had found you earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to spend so much money because for the other times, apart from spending money with the test, mm -hmm. I asked for a remark two times. Wow. Okay yeah wow so more money there yeah yeah and, um, and um, those... I'm, i'm very happy to jump to 7.5 yeah absolutely no and now you can move on to the next challenge yeah yes exactly excellent and final question before we finish um what would you say to anybody who's thinking about joining the online course really put an effort on it because it's even If the course is amazing, if you don't actually dedicate your time and uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, make a decision to study and understand mm. the feedback, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. So actually put your efforts on it and mm -hmm. uh, write your essays and ask questions if you had. I remember that I sent several emails with questions because <laughs> I, I had doubts or if I didn't understand something. So ask, go after it and mm -hmm. don't give up. It's gonna, it's gonna work out. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And uh, just to clarify, when you get the feedback, put effort into studying the feedback from the... Yes. Exactly. Right. Right. Definitely. Yes. So after you receive, of course, the first time you're not gonna have 
a feedback before the first essay, right? But mm. the minute you get the first feedback, put your effort on it. If you don't understand, ask and write the second feedback mm. and write the second essay. I'm sorry, uh, the fastest you can, mm. as you can. And uh, really, if you if you work and if you put your effort on it, you're gonna get it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's like one point and I only had one month to study. So. Wow. Wow. That is yeah. awesome. Well done. But one very important thing that you mentioned, and I think that a lot of uh, a lot of all of us, we kind of forget this, but IELTS and, and just like any test and any big challenge, it's it's not a spectator sport. You have to mm -hmm. you have to get in there and you have to get involved, yeah. like just binging on YouTube videos isn't going to isn't going to isn't preparation, but studying no. your feedback, studying your answers, doing research on possible and, topics yeah. all of this is is Practicing getting in the hard topics that you don't know anything about exactly exactly because it can be anything you can yeah. get anything exactly when when i send a question out to a student and they reply uh this question's a bit hard can i do can i write about this topic instead mm -hmm. and i'm like come mm -hmm. on no. well you come on you know like okay yeah i'll send you this question it's a bit easier and in the exam you can do the same Put your hand up and ask them if they can have an easier topic. Of course, of course I wish that we could choose on the exactly, exam. Right? That yeah. would be amazing. Exactly. But since it's not life is not as easy as we want. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> practice as much as you can and the course is definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Uh it's definitely uh very very good to have someone like people with uh, actually real knowledge on the test and how to get uh, the best preparation. Absolutely. Yeah, completely agree there. Okay, Mariana. Well, thank you very much for doing uh, this recording. And, thank you very much. And we wish you all the best with your Canada application. Uh, IELTS